Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Clash Bash. This is um, top eight, game two of Alex versus Tapa. Um, so that we saw them play Alex. Alex on Dromai and Tapa on Kano. Now we're going to watch Alex on Ira and Tapa on Kano, I believe. Um, but I am Elaine and I am joined here today by Mo Bogsley. As usual, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Elaine. Thanks for having me here. Uh, super excited to watch watch more of the Clash Bash. These games have been super exciting. And watching Tapa on Kano is a treat. And watching Alex on Dromai was a treat. So I'm sure Ira will also be amazing. Yeah, well, let's jump into it then. Teppa back out with Kano versus Ira. Uh, this is a matchup I know very well in Blitz. Um, normally, Ira presents a lot of Arcane Barrier. We see here there's AB4 on the Ira side. So it's a lot of Arcane Barrier that Kano needs to get through. Um, Elaine, have you played this matchup at all? No, I have not played this matchup at all. Um, I haven't really played either of these heroes. I've actually never played Ira. Um, and I've played a little bit of Kano. Ooh. Um, but I've never played Ira. I feel like I need to go get one of those Ira welcome decks. That feels like a rite of passage. Uh, yeah, so all right. this turn cycle is exactly what Ira wants to do. <laughs> Kadachi for one, Kadachi for two, and then just like a big dumb attack to close out the chain. Uh, open the center is perfect because it's a two for five. The text really doesn't matter. It's just a lot of damage. Um, and Alex is really going to try to utilize these, like, two to three card hands. It's going to be, like, Kadachi, Kadachi, big dumb number to force Kano's life total and force their hand to block. Kano, on the other hand... Eight. What was that, Elaine? I, I was just going to point out that Ira is running AB3. Uh, AB4, right? Tide Flippers yes, has AB, AB on that. The tide yeah. Flippers. Kano is going to have to send these big attacks, like these Scoldings for uh, six or seven, uh, the Voltic Bolts for five or six. Uh, Kano is going to need to try to overextend over that AB because this Ira deck should have a lot of blues. And the more blues you have, the more you can use this Arcane Barrier and the worse it gets for Kano. And Kano turns zero, popping their Mage Master Boots. Must have a really good hand. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Let's see what Kano presents. Got to be aggressive. Aether Flare. <clears throat> Only for three. Not using the staff yet. So wanting to save the staff for the next attack, it looks like. Or not having the resources to pay for the staff. So Alex can cover this up with a single blue. And it looks like they will. Pitching a blue. So Aether Flare is not doing anything, unfortunately. Into an Aether Quickening. For four, uh, the surge doesn't matter because it's not doing more than its base attack. So this is only four damage. A one card in hand for the Kano player. Alex deciding all their options, debating if they want to pitch another blue to save three life, or if they just want to save that blue to go Kadachi Kadachi, big dumb combo lines. Big, dumb combo lines. Every ninja's dream. And it looks like Alex yeah. takes the four. And we see an arsenal from Kano. Yeah, so arsenal is really important uh, to try to set up those big turns later with the uh, wildfire. Uh, Blazing Aether, my bad. Blazing Aether, this is... No wildfire in this format. Ira pitching a blue. Sending Kadachi for one. Uh, death by a thousand cuts is the game plan normally for Ira. Kano taking that down to 12. Here comes the Kadachi for two. Thanks to Ira's hero ability. Kano takes that down to 10. Into a torrent of tempo. A one for five. That if it hits as go again. Uh, this is a must block in the Iro deck. Uh, just because. Yep. You, card in hand. Card in arsenal. However. Razor reflex is a card. So even if you block this. You could still just get razored. 
Uh, wouldn't have any other cards to play, but it is something to think about. Yeah, I was going to say, there's only one card in hand, one card in Arsenal in this situation. So the Razor, um, yeah, the, it still won't, it'll gain the go again um, if it puts it over the top. But there's there's nothing coming out, nothing coming after it. Yeah, but Tapa at 10, that's almost his whole life total <laughs> if this gets Razored, which is kind of terrifying. I wonder if Tapa has anything to respond with. So thinking about it. Yeah, maybe trying to send some but, arcane damage to get the last card so the go again doesn't actually matter. Yeah, or but uh Alex is still healthy at 16 life. Um and I would imagine that that 16 damage is a lot in the clash format to Kano for Kano to present. Yeah, the only way you can kill from 16 is if you find like a blazing aether off the top and some damage falls off the top uh, without any way to get instant speed damage. It's very hard to close that big of a gap. And the mage master boots are already gone as well. Yeah. So Teppa just blocking for six, keeping two cards in hand and one in arsenal. So maybe able to still have a big pop off turn. Pitching the energy potion, activating the staff. Into the spindle. This is an iconic spindle. card. Yeah. Aether spindle's a good card. Yeah, being able to stack the top of your deck to exactly draw blues, exactly hit the cards you need to off the top, really is a must block card. I would not be surprised if I see Alex block four here. Uh, looks like blocking three, just pitching one blue. Only taking two off of the spindle. Oh. Well. Yeah, like I said, this is a, a must block card. So even pitching another blue here just to save one life denies that opt ability. Yes, only taking one down to 15. Two cards in hand still. And those Kadachis are so good with just one card. Yeah, especially with Ira's ability and one card still... Swing, swing. Yeah, but looking for Iris, she gets two cards, which is just even more insane. The arsenal is still there for Tapa. Both players sitting on an arsenal. So oh, that is a soul beach strike. Maybe there's no blues in the hand for Alex. <laughs> On hit, go again. So. This might be a great time for the gauntlets to block. It blocks for one. It covers this break point with any card. The yep. gauntlet does come out here. Unless there's a razor in Arsenal. A razor in a Kadachi Kadachi would be so rude. It'd be really rude. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just like start with the soul bead strike. That's really good. Hiding information, right? And then just yeah. razor Kadachi Kadachi. I That'd be kind of crazy. Might have to call the police if that got <laughs> razored. Luckily for Alex, Please. he does not razor it. So Kano gets a three card hand plus Arsenal. If the top of his deck is generous, or if he wants to pop that Ragamuffins, this could be an insane turn. Activating Kano. Kano activation. A spindle. That's oh. The best case really good i think it's a blue spindle though i can't tell though it does it does look like a blue a blue spindle on there and that's a blazing oh, aether and a blazing aether i wonder what the arsenal is yeah one card's left so they could spindle for three no nope, just gonna spindle for two it looks like keeping one floating There's always an awkward spot because if the Kano player wants to leave one floating, it means that last card is probably a good card to play with that blazing. So Alex will cover it all up. And Tapa right. says, you know, I'll just send zero. The good old blazing either for zero is always a uh, dominance play, and I do love seeing it. Yeah, one floating, and I, I 
was curious if we'd see the card in Arsenal come out that cost one because there was no crucible activation, but. Yeah, maybe when he saw the blue pitched, he realized he didn't want to waste the card in Arsenal because it wasn't worth it. So he just lost one value, but the blue pitched would cover it anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. Got you for one. The one's already been taken. Head jab. This is a classic card right here. Just a zero for three go again. Coming in for four <laughs> due to Ira's ability, though. Yeah, zero for three go again. That's just that's just good in any deck, uh, in any ninja deck. Can't complain. Okay, maybe we'll see the first combo line come off of Ira. Kano said no blocks on the head job. Alex is still really healthy at 15 life. Tapa at 5 life. It looks like Tapa wants to hold his grip, though. Maybe his head is really good with Ragmuffin's hat and with the card in Arsenal where he thinks he can just one-shot Alex for 15 or take his whole hand. Down the 4, though. A card left. Soul Beat Strike, strike. Blue. <laughs> That's an interesting one. On hit, number. go again. Yeah. Is this a bluff is the question. Does Alex have a better card in hand that he can play after this, or was it all a bluff? To pa down to two. To pa showing his full grip of cards still. And if Alex sends this last attack, you always have to be worried that you might just get OTK'd with no cards in hand. A lot harder to do in this format than formats like Blitz or Classic Instructed. And to pot activates Kano. Yep. Like you've been playing a little bit of uh, Kano. What do you think he's looking for here? I haven't been playing enough to know. Um, <laughs> especially in a in a clash format, I'm trying to think of like relevant cards. Um, I think. I think the most relevant ones are ones we've already seen, like the Blazing Aether and the Aether Spindle. See a Crucible activation. You are the Kano Master, though. Yeah, I, I don't think Pronoscotate Blue is exactly what he's looking for. Uh, it might make Alex pitch that last card, though, which is very valuable. Not letting Ira have an arsenal until the next turn, uh, just to save one extra life. And nope, Alex takes both damage down to 13. Wow. Um, but even with the one float, I guess <laughs> Alex is potentially worried about something with a um, bigger on hit than progress, prog prognosticate. Alex does have go again, though, which is the main thing. Uh, that could be a one for five. It could also be a big bluff from Alex. We don't mm -hmm. know. Here comes a snapback. Not back. That makes sense for the last turn. He was trying to get extra damage for that blazing. And now Alex respects the snapback. This would put him down to 10. This is really risky if you throw your whole hand at Alex here and 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 can't manage to kill and Alex can just come in with that last card in hand. That last card is another one for five or a soul beat striker, even a zero for four. I mean, it could just be a nice old snatch, and that would just kill Tapa. So he might have to hold back these cards. Oh, looks like Tapa's going to go for it. Looks like he's going to activate Kano here. Hold priority. Activate Ragamuffin's hat to put the card from his hand on top of his deck. I assume this is something like Blazing Aether. Oh, it's a scolding. It's a scolding. scolding. That'd be for six damage. Assuming it's a pod drew blue, and he did draw blue. Okay. Scolding for six. Let's put Alex on the four. Does Alex really want to arsenal this card? No. Decides to block it. Goes down to four. Six, I mean, yep, goes down to six. Interesting. Did that soul beat strike hit? It did, didn't it? Yes. It, yes, it had the go again on it. 
Yeah, Tapa took um, everything that Alex threw that turn, but managed to chip nine life and and get that arsenal out. So this game is suddenly within Tapa's <laughs> reach here. Only has to do six more damage. And the problem is these Kadachis are so annoying for a Kano player that has no armor that blocks. Yeah, I was going we're going to see. Is now or never. Oh, hey, there's a blazing. Oh. This could be it. Three cards in hand, though. You just have to hope they're all reds. And hope the top of your deck is good to you. Another Kano activation. Wait a minute. That's a one okay. for four. That's some good damage. Two cards left. This is a lesson. That's it. Four damage. And this is really smart because if you could buy Alex's whole hand, you can spend that last card to block the Kadachi. Uh, if you think you can live. Otherwise, you can activate Kano again to try to push my damage. Unfortunately, Alex with AB4 just completely covered this attack. So I do think Tapa needs to activate Kano again and hopes to hit the low cost card. Right, because yeah, Alex being able to cover that entire attack makes Blazing Aether. Oh, I snap back for three. So this is representing lethal with that. With the Blazing Aether following it up, right? But another blue. Oh my god, that's lethal. The Kadachi is going to take the the power's poor life. Alex wins. All right, so we we saw Ira um, Alex take it down with Ira. This was a best out of three matches, and that was game two. Alex took it down on Dromai first, and then on Ira Tapa playing some really impressive Kano for this clash format, but just not able to get there. Either way, do you have any final thoughts on these players? Yeah, I think both players play their respected decks really well. Um, Alex was clearly prepared for this matchup, bringing AB4 and Ira and the hate we saw in Jomai. But Tapao really managed that AB4 very well, I think. Uh, really put the pressure on and said, hey, do you have the blues? If your whole hand is red, you are dead. Uh, unlucky for Tepa, there was blues in hand, so it didn't get there. But both players played that so, so well. Yeah, there was that that um, one turn where Tapa was just really calling Alex's bluff, or you know, saying, "Are you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off, and we'll see if you're bluffing or not. Do you have another attack coming, or do you need that to stay alive?" Um, I agree. Managed the AB four really well. New new wind to come in for for some damage, and and new wind to hold off and block. Um, and I think Tapa does a, a really great job of just like playing playing to your outs. Also, a really great example. Yeah, and hey, if you're a fan of Tapa, we might see him in the next Clash event. However, if you're a fan of Alex, I got good news. He's on to the next round, so we will see more of that amazing Ira deck, more of that amazing Jomai deck, and I'm so excited to see where this format goes. Yeah, great games to watch. Great, great players. We've we've seen them both play um, throughout this league, so excited and congratulations to Alex for moving on to top the top four next rounds. Um, where can people find you, Moboxley? Yeah, you can find me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash uh, I tweet a lot. A lot of it's nonsense, a lot of it's fun, but if you're into that kind of stuff, feel free to follow me. Ali, oh, <laughs> Elaine, where can they find you? <laughs> Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. My handle is e ham on tree ham on tree. It's exactly how it sounds. Um, and yeah, I'm one half of the Pitch Perfect podcast with Melody Likes, and I am one third of the founders of the Rainbow X Pitch League with Melody Likes as well and Kiki Labad. So that is also in my Twitter bio. If you just go to e ham on tree, but this is always a blast. I I love doing these games with you. So um, until next time, hopefully. See you guys later. Bye.